until World War II, a severe spinal cord injury was almost universally fatal. I mean, everybody died in the initial two years following injury, um, mainly as a result of, of, you know, not good rehab options. And so the development of specialized spinal cord injury centers has really dramatically improved the survival rates and the health and also the functional outcomes of people with spinal cord injury. Um, spinal cord injury rehab is ideally delivered um, in an in interdisciplinary nature um, that is going to focus on achieving and maintaining good health, maximizing the function, and promoting good quality of life for these patients. Um, and that's going to be a core that's, that's really multidisciplinary. So physical therapy will be part of this, occupational therapy, um, vocational therapy in some cases, um, rehab psychology, social work, um, case management. Um, it's it's a really a, a complex team um, because the needs really span the entirety of the patient's life. Their entire life has changed. It doesn't matter if they get really good inpatient physical therapy if they don't have wheelchair access into their own house. Um, so all those things are, are things that are important. Um, following a spinal cord injury, the presence of lower extremity impairments often necessitates that individuals compensate by using their arms um, for instrumental ADLs and mobility like transfers and wheelchair propulsion. And over time, increase in repetitive use of the upper extremities can lead to overuse syndromes, um, which obviously are primarily the purview of physical medicine and rehabilitation, but spinal, um, spine surgeons should also be aware of these things in their role as a patient advocate. Um, shoulder pain is one of the most common upper extremity complaints following a spinal cord injury, and that's from chronic use during reaching and transfers, and often leads to asymmetric wear and tear on the shoulders. Uh, partial or full thickness tears the rotator cuff can be common, uh, but there are numerous other shoulder pathology issues that can occur more commonly in patients with spinal cord injury. Other commonly encountered sites of um, pain in the arms can include elbow, wrist, and hand issues. The reported prevalence of carpal tunnel following spinal cord injuries up to 66% of patients, which is a crazy high number. Um, management of carpal tunnel can include steroids or even surgery. Um, and it's important to know that splinting is, tends to not be as effective in this group because they use their hands for so much. Um, and so the cornerstone of managing overuse syndromes is reduction of those repetitive activities um, and incorporation of adaptations that really minimize the associated stress. So, so minimizing overhead reaching, incorporating assistive devices and ergonomics and, and proper seating positioning. So, so little things really matter a lot um, in, the, in the downstream effects on patients with spinal cord injury. Going further out into the chronic complications of spinal cord injury, um, the prevalence of risk factors for coronary artery disease increases after SCI. Um, and those specific risk factors can include things like hyperlipidemia, glucose intolerance, um, and lower physical activity levels. Um, and cardiovascular morbidity and mortality occurs earlier and more often in patients um, that have spinal cord injury than in those without. Um, and I, in fact, CAD is the leading cause of death um, amongst people with, with spinal cord injury in the chronic phase. Um, spinal, uh, uh, CAD can also be asymptomatic uh, in patients with spinal cord injury. So the visceral afferent fibers to the heart enter the spinal cord at T1 through T4. So people with a cervical cord injury um, can actually have uh, no symptoms of cardiac pain, um, which means that you have to be really vigilant um, in, in considering this as a, as a physician treating these patients. Heterotopic ossification is a condition that's characterized by the formation of ectopic bone in the joints where it shouldn't be. Um, in the setting of spinal cord injury, that always occurs below the level of injury, and the most common site is the hips. Um, and severe cases can lead to a loss of range of motion or even joint ankylosis where the joint auto fuses. Um, most cases are going to be asymptomatic, but um, loss of hip range of motion can interfere with the seated posture, independence, and transfer. So it's something that you want to look out for. Osteoporosis following spinal cord injury is also a significant source of morbidity and mortality. Um, we call it a sublesional osteoporosis when it occurs below the neurological level of injury. Um, and almost half of patients with chronic spinal cord injury may sustain fragility fractures, um, which are usually going to be in the leg. Because of these long term issues, long term follow up is really essential to maintain health and prevent complications, preferably with someone who is familiar with these sequelae. Everyone, Ryan Rad here from NeurosurgeryTraining.org. If you like that video, subscribe and donate to keep our content available for medical students across the world.